Hello friends, how are you all? My name is Arshid Devedi and I welcome you back to my video. So in this video friends, I will be explaining layers of atmosphere to you. The very first layer in our atmosphere is troposphere, then comes the stratosphere, then comes the mesosphere, then comes the thermosphere and then comes the exosphere. There is one more layer named as ionosphere. So ionosphere small parts lies in this mesosphere and then it comes in the thermosphere. So all of these things will be discussed in detail by me friends. Slight idea I will be giving you and then Videos with respect to troposphere and stratosphere I will be making separately because both of these layers actually have one very specific properties so that cannot be explained here. Also one more video I have made that is related to planetary boundary layer which is the lower part of the troposphere. So that I have already made so the link of that video is given in the description box below so please go and watch that video also. This is presented by me Arshad Devati friends. If you want to follow me the link of my Insta profile is given in the description box below. This video is in English friends, if you want to watch the Hindi version of the video, the link of that is also given below. Now the very first layer that we are going to talk about, the most important one is the troposphere. Now why it is the most important friends, because this is the lowest layer of the atmosphere and we are living in this layer. It starts at the ground level and it extends up to a height of 10 kilometers, which is around 6.2 miles or 33,000 feet above sea level. So all the human and animals are living in this uh, troposphere friends and nearly all the weather phenomena for example rains cloud snowing and everything like this is happening in this troposphere only okay mostly clouds appears here only 99% of the water where water vapor of the atmosphere is present in troposphere and around 75% of the atmospheric air is present in troposphere now it has a very special property troposphere that when we are going upwards when we are increasing in height then the temperature is dropping and the pressure is dropping and it is being said that temperature is dropping because of a decrease in pressure now we are going to look that why this is happening but we very well know that as we go up high in the air the temperature drops this is why mountains are very very cool now why is this happening friends see what happens that pressure at the ground level is high and as we go higher, the pressure reduces. Okay. So what happens that when a parcel of air moves upward, so at the ground, it is under heavy pressure, not heavy pressure, comparatively more pressure. So it is together. So as it moves upwards, it starts expanding because the pressure is less. So its effective surface area increases. And because of this, it dissipates more heats and becomes cooler. Okay, so when it expands, it cools. So this is the reason that as we go up, the pressure reduces and the pressure reduces, the temperature also reduces and this is being also told by the Gay-Lussac law, G-A-Y-L-U-S-S-A-C. -S okay, so this is one thing which you want, uh, we should have known and I have told you. Then friends, moving forward, at, uh, you know, at what rate? is the temperature decreasing that is also very important friends to so see for every kilometer 6.5 degree centigrade is decreasing as we are moving upper than the earth surface friends and actually by what quantity the temperature is dropping will depend from day to day will depend from weather will depend from the local geography will depend on the latitude a lot of things it will depend upon okay now the troposphere ends at the tropopause because after this tropopause what starts stratosphere starts friends so this troposphere height is lowest at the poles because at the poles this troposphere exists at a height of 7 to 10 kilometers above the earth surface and at the equator this troposphere lies up to a height of 17 to 18 kilometers from the earth surface okay and after that the stratosphere so at the equator the height of the tropopause is quite high and as we move towards the pole, the height keeps decreasing of the troposphere and the then troposphere will lie up to a height of 7 to 10 kilometers. Now, after that comes the stratosphere. Now, stratosphere will start obviously at the tropopause and it will extend up to a height of 50 kilometers. Okay. And most of the ozone lies in this stratosphere. Now, there is one property which is different in the stratosphere with respect to troposphere. What is happening that in the stratosphere, when we are going upwards, when the height is increasing, the temperature is also increasing. What was happening in the troposphere? As we were going upwards, the temperature was dropping, it was becoming colder. But in stratosphere, as we are going higher, the temperature will be increasing. Okay, so in stratosphere, 
as soon as we go high you know why this is happening this is happening because there is a ozone layer in the stratosphere now all the ultraviolet radiations that are coming from the sun they will react with that ozone layer and will emit heat and that is why when we go higher up in the stratosphere the temperature of that layer rises okay then friends this ozone layer is also very important for the human and animal life on earth because it protects us from skin cancer and other health damages these ultraviolet rays if they are not treated with the ozone layer they can be very harmful to the human life on earth okay now what was responsible for these uh, you know uh, ozone layer see ozone layer depletion has been a topic which has been news for some years for some decades i would say montreal protocol dealt with the elimination of ozone depleting substance so these ozone depleting substance are cf cfc chlorofluorocarbons freons halons all those things which are containing chlorine in them so because this chlorine used to attach themselves with the ozone layer and break the o3 into oxygen ions okay and then combine the oxygen with other elements so that ozone can not be again formed so this is the total process and this basically is happening in the polar stratospheric clouds of the antarctica now it was being said that the polar stratospheric clouds of the antarctica especially during winters now when will the winter come in antarctica obviously during may june because that is southern hemisphere so at that point of time the temperatures become very very low and such type of situation occurs that the presence of these elements there leads to the depletion of ozone layer in a huge quantity and that was very much worrisome for the scientists and you can see friends that the consumption of this cfc halons freons would have happened where people lived and antarctica is one place where people are not living in huge numbers only some research stations are there that too in the summers only in winters they are also not there so these cfcs freons and halons have made all their way from their place of use to the antarctica and they are there they are playing their role in the depletion of ozone layer so we can see that this ozone layer depletion is because of the pollution which has which we have caused decades back so that is why this montreal protocol was brought in and the production of these elements cfc freons halons has been completely banned now they are not used and it has said that yes now ozone layer is recovering and it can being said that in the 21st century this ozone layer will actually quite recover and it is a slow process recovering of ozone layer is not an easy task see the depletion of ozone layer has taken decades so obviously the recovery of ozone layer will also take decades you can destroy the environment in a small amount of time but in order to recover it it will take years decades okay so this is one thing friends this montreal protocol has been very very effective then one thing that i'm going to tell you that is very important why the commercial jets are flying uh, flying in the lower stratosphere because they, this is a less turbulent layer a smoother ride is there why a smoother ride is there because vertical movement of air is not there now why vertical movement of air is not there why turbulence and updraft are not in the stratosphere whereas in the troposphere they are present in huge quantity for example you know just above the stratos just above the tropopause in the stratosphere these commercial jets are flying now if these commercial jets would have been flying below the tropopause you know constant uh, turbulence would have been uh, experienced by the passengers for example during the take off and during the landing time when the aircraft starts descending if you have ever been sitting in an airplane friends you will see that when you take off and when you are going upwards you will see turbulence then when you will be taking a downward turn and you will start descending then also a turbulence is there the aircraft personnel the captain says that now we are starting our descent towards our destination so at that point of time the turbulence is also there because at that point of time we are going to pass through those tropospheric layers which we were avoiding when we were flying in stratosphere so this is happening because in troposphere vertical movement of air is there and why vertical movement of the air is there because friends the air at the ground in troposphere is warm and the air above it is cool so obviously the warm air will rise upwards towards the cooler areas okay and this will bring in a vertical draft movement this is not happening in stratosphere friends because in stratosphere the lower level airs are cool but the higher level is warm because ozone layer is there so that is why vertical movement of air is not there 
Are you getting my point? So this is happening. For example, when a temperature inversion takes place, or sometimes you can see a nocturnal inversion is there. These things I will be discussing in the planetary body layer video. So there you should have seen, friends, that when a temperature inversion occurs, what happens? The air which is touched with the ground level, its temperature is actually less than the temperature of the air which is above it. So if the upper level air is more warmer than the lower level air, so the lower level air will not be able to go upward. So vertical movement of air will not be there. Updraft will not be there. Turbulence will not be there. And this is the turbulence which these commercial jets are avoiding. Even in the stratosphere, sometimes you see turbulence. Okay, but very less turbulence is there. Even that turbulence is very less. You cannot imagine the amount of turbulence you will feel if you are flying in the troposphere continuously, friends. Okay. Now, the jet stream is also flowing near the boundary of this troposphere and stratosphere. Then moving forward to the next layer, it is the mesosphere, friends. Now, mesosphere starts from the end of stratosphere and goes up to 85 km in height. That is 53 miles above our planet, above our ground. The meteors which are entering the Earth's atmosphere, they burn in the mesosphere. Okay, now when in stratosphere with increasing high temperature is rising, it is increasing. But in the mesosphere again friends, as you are going higher, the temperatures are becoming less and less and it is becoming more cold and cold. So the coldest temperature of the Earth atmosphere at the top of the mesosphere is minus 90 degrees centigrade. That is 130 degree Fahrenheit. Okay, and that point is called as mesopause because mesopause is the boundary between mesosphere and thermosphere. So at that point of time, at that place, the temperature is minus 130 degree Fahrenheit, minus 90 degree centigrade. Okay. Now, air in the mesosphere is very thin to breathe and air pressure in the mesosphere is also very low. The lowest parts of mesosphere, just when the mesosphere is starting, the pressure there is 1% of the uh, sea level pressure. So you can see how less the pressure is there. And this mesosphere is not very well studied also because the aircraft, the jets and the hot air balloons, they just don't, they do they go just up to stratosphere, friends, not above that. And these satellites and space shuttles, they fly very high. They go even above mesosphere in the, they go even above mesosphere, they go into the thermosphere, for example, the International State Space Station, ISS, is present in the thermosphere. And many of the satellites, they go very high up. So, mesosphere is not very well studied. Okay, then moving forward, the next layer is the thermosphere. And it is also important for you to understand the difference between thermosphere and ionosphere. So first we are going to talk about thermosphere. The thermosphere starts where the mesosphere ends. So obviously it starts from around 85 to 90 kilometers in height to 500 to 1000 kilometers, that is 1000 kilometers. Now you can see that the outer limit of thermosphere is not fixed. Why? Because the outer limit of thermosphere will depend upon the amount of sun's energy received so with the variation in the amount of sun's energy received which will depend upon the latitudes the outer layer of thermosphere will be decided also very high energy x-rays and uv radiations are being absorbed in this thermosphere which is why the temperature of thermosphere can be very very high sometimes in thousands of degree for example 1500 to 2000 degrees in some cases but still the air is so so thin in this layer that you will feel freezing cold there even uh, despite of the presence of thousands of degree of temperature there. So basically thermosphere is very much like the outer space. But still there are many more things there. Also this international space station flies in the thermosphere friends. And the phenomenon of aurora borealis and aurora australis. Okay, They are visible only at the north pole or in the vicinity of the north pole and the vicinity of the south pole. Now obviously many people cannot go to the south pole. Going to Antarctica is not a very good option. And it is not that much convenient also. Till now it is not very convenient. However, few expeditions go. Few tourists have also started going to Antarctica. But still it is very, very expensive and not very convenient. But yes, you can go easily go to countries like Canada, Denmark, Alaska. Okay. So there, Scandinavian countries. So there you can see this phenomena of these charged particles from space colliding with atoms and molecules in the thermosphere. And they are being deflected away because of the, our magnetosphere the magnetic effect of the earth and that is why we they dance in higher states of energy and seem to us as dancing lights of red green and different different colors okay friends so this is the phenomenon of aurora borealis and aurora australis this is very beautiful friends i have just seen it in videos i also long to go there and see it and if you any video of you have seen it then please share your experience 
Then coming on friends, we will talk about ionosphere. Now ionosphere is one layer which shares a lot in common with the mesosphere. Ionosphere is said to start at around 80 kilometers in height friends. And it is said that many people say ionosphere and thermosphere is the same thing. But actually it is not same. Ionosphere has some parts in the mesosphere because as I know mesosphere ends at 85 kilometers and ionosphere starts at 80 kilometers. So 5 to 10 kilometers of mesosphere comes into ionosphere and the rest part comes in the thermosphere. Okay, now what happens in the ionosphere? The energy of the sun, when it comes in contact with the molecules and atoms, it ejects the electrons of these molecules and atoms and brings a positive charge in them. So ion formation is there. Okay, and the amount of ion formation will depend from day to day, day and night, from seasons to seasons. So the temperature of the thermosphere will depend according to the concentration of the ions, which will vary from day, night, season, a lot of variation is there. Okay, friends. Also, ionosphere absorbs the radio waves. So, you can see, you know, very far away radio broadcast can be heard in New Zealand. So, a lot of these phenomena can be there. So, ionosphere has a lot of scientific applications. And those scientific applications are being used for the benefit of the mankind. And in future, many technological advances are going to be made so that they can be used more. Then the final layer comes, this is exosphere friends. Many people say that thermosphere is the outermost layer. But yes, exosphere is said to be the final most layer. The air is very very thin and this is this layer from which the air of the atmosphere is leaking out into the outer space. And some scientists say that if we measure the distance between earth and moon, so halfway, till halfway from earth, between earth and moon, exosphere extends in some cases. Exosphere extends in some cases. So, this was the final point so, uh, that I have already told you, fun, my final point that from earth to moon, whatever distance is there, some scientists say that exosphere is standing till in the middle of the distance of earth and moon. So, thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel, like my video, comment and please share this video with more and more of your friends.